episode three of I Took the Risk. I'm your host, Corey Bishop, and here we're joined by two special guests today, Mr. Will Toms and Mr. Dave Silver, the founders of Rec Philly. Would you guys like to give our viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. About ourselves or about Rec? Either one. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so first, we're the founders, like you said, of a company called Rec, uh, which is an acronym for Resources for Every Creator. And essentially, you know, what we aim to build with Rec is an ecosystem that allows creators to be able to do more of what they love. So, you know, for any aspiring and active creative entrepreneur, it's really important to be able to get connected to the high quality resources to be able to create on a high level. Um, it's really important to understand how do I actually make a business around my creative outlet? What does that look like? How do I get connected to the right strategies, the right experts? And then third, how do I just be connected to a community of like-minded people? Right, because we all know the entrepreneurial journey can get lonely, and having those like-minded people is really supportive. So for us, it's about connecting folks to that, and the way we really empower creators is through our space, our ten thousand square foot space here in Philadelphia, um, but also our creative agency where we get to work with brands and also hire our members to do what they love to do. So that's just kind of like the high level about Rec and mm -hmm. and what we're doing there. Uh, but maybe Dave, you want to kick it off, kind of the personal background and. Yeah, Dave Silver, CEO, co-founder with Will. Uh, this is really all I know. I've been doing this for over a decade. Started by throwing concerts in a basement in North Philadelphia. Then me and Will started building the business in another basement in South Philadelphia. And then we started building the business back in North, back in North Philadelphia on the fourth floor of a warehouse. Uh, so we've been all over the city, uh, office out in West Philly, uh, office in Old City. We've been bouncing around for literally over a decade. Uh, my background really is in event planning, uh, putting together concerts and parties that really always had a, a mission to provide a platform for creatives that we loved who are super talented from the city. Always trying to give them more and more opportunities so they would want to stay in the city of Philadelphia and build their business uh, around their art here versus going elsewhere. And that's really the whole mission behind our, our business is providing that platform and empowering these creative people to stay in their city, specifically here in Philadelphia, um, and let them do more of what they love and let them get paid to be themselves. Um, that's what I care about. It's my purpose in life is to create those opportunities. And I'm just blessed every day to be able to keep doing it alongside my best friend from high school. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know you guys were best friends, know each other that long. You go way back. <laughs> way wow. back. Absolutely. That's, definitely, that's cool. Um, and event planning, like a lot of people don't know how intricate like, or detail-oriented that is. Uh, I had a friend of mine that is an event planner. He's like very detailed. And so that's, that's something that a lot of people don't really, I guess, probably pay attention to. Yeah, super stressful. Um, <laughs> a, a, a lot of logistics, a lot of planning, tons of pre-production, uh, a lot happening the day of and during the event. But um, you know, when you're doing it around that whole idea of creating that platform for these artists to to do what they love, like the moment they hit the stage and they're in front of that audience, like that that moment is so special to me personally. That allows me to kind of go through the ringer to put take on that stress to, to make those opportunities happen. Definitely, absolutely. So you guys kind of talked about uh, a little bit in uh, detail, the breakdown of what kind of rec is. Um, for those, our, for our viewers that haven't or don't know anything about it, could you kind of give a little bit more like of the nooks and crannies of what uh, really holds rec together? Yeah, so I mean, the, the what holds rec together really is our team. Right? Mm -hmm. We got a really strong team of folks who are really committed to the vision and the mission of what we do. Um, but more tangibly, what that looks like again is a couple of different pieces. One is the physical space, right? So we're sitting in the live room of our space. This is one of 14 private studios. Um, all throughout the space, if I was to kind of break down just like what it looks like and what the tools are, 14 private studios, that's four recording studios, that's this live room for bands to rehearse, to be able to create all sorts of content. Um, we have a design studio for all the messier arts. Um, we've got an editing station, right, with computers, with all the Adobe Creative Suite in there. And we've got a movement studio for dancers, mindfulness folks, yoga, all that kind of stuff. We've got a podcast studio. We've got this, this endless array of all the tools that we as creators are gonna need, it's all here. And then on the, front, on the front of our space is also a retail store, right? So being able to have our creators that are get into a place where they're creating physical merchandise, we sit in this big mall in Center City, Philly, right? The, the gallery, as a lot of us from Philly know it, the fashion district to others. Mm -hmm. um, but with a bunch of people walking by, being able to see 
you know, local creators having merchandise available to purchase there. A lot of our members, this is like the only physical place that they are able to do that. So that's really supportive for them to be able to make money as well. And then on the back of the space, we've got a co-working space, mm -hmm. right? To be able to just pull up, bring your laptop, get work done, connect with folks. And that co-working space also doubles as a venue in partnership with Live Nation. And that's where we're doing a lot of our educational programming. Um, it's also where we're able to throw concerts, right? And get back to where we come from, which is that live event space. So that's the space. Mm -hmm. Then there's the creative agency, right? Yeah. The agency, we're doing things like, you know, talent booking. We're doing things like content creation, and digital storytelling. Um, and then we're also doing like event planning, right? Yeah. On behalf of brands like Lyft and Red Bull and the city of Philadelphia. And when these businesses need creative services, they come to us. And then that allows us to go right into our membership pool and say, yo, we need, you know, a photographer. We need a video editor to help us with this documentary mm -hmm. that Independence Blue Cross hired us to create. And that allows us to pay our members to do what they love. So that's the agency. And really this whole ecosystem, all of these different moving parts is really centered around our app. Mm -hmm. So our members get to log into the app and uh, be able to, you know, grab jobs off the job board, right? That come yeah. from the agency or from our, our different partners or be able to just connect with the other 1,000 plus members in the community or book the studios. Yeah, um, I definitely see that this is a space for a lot of people to create and just be around people, like you said, like-minded individuals um, and also get the opportunities that they may not get just walking down the street Absolutely. or may not be able to tap into if they're um, still working their nine to five. They don't get to see you know, the founders or the CEOs of their company like just just chilling in here or just talking to you. Hey, how you doing? How's your day going? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that's important because like, you know, this is a community, right? And like all of our staff members and, and Dave and myself, we're all creatives, right? Mm -hmm. And we look at ourselves as just another piece of the community. And um, what you mentioned about the Jobs and Opportunity Board, like that's always been really important to us because even for myself, like when I was coming up, you know, back when we were throwing all those shows, you know, Dave was really instrumental doing the booking. And I was doing a lot of the media stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I come from the video production world, et cetera. And as like a young videographer, it's like, yo, I'm capable of doing so many gigs. And I know every weekend, right, there's tons of gigs where people are paying videographers. But the challenge is, if you don't have the network to know who needs your services, mm -hmm. you're not going to get those jobs. You're not going to be able to make money. So for us, we always looked at that jobs and opportunity board as almost a way to, like, democratize opportunity, right? Yeah. Obviously, you know, we, we are running a business, this is an agency, so we want to, you know, do best by our clients. Mm -hmm. But even being able to apply to say, yo, I'm ready to knock this gig out. Here's my my, my reel, right? Absolutely. Can go a really long way. So that's just like another one of the tools that, that we thought was important, you know, to build this ecosystem the way we see fit. Definitely. That's that's cool. Uh, just thank you for giving us a, a deeper dive into the look of what uh, is such a big part of people or is a big part of people's lives and uh how they come in and what they create and how they create um so what kind of inspired the idea of rec um could you give me that acronym again yeah yeah so the acronym is resources for every creator mm -hmm. right okay. um and the inspiration you know is is dope because as founders we got to really just solve our own problem first mm -hmm. you know what i mean again we come we, we come from being you know friends in high school and like i remember <laughs> when dave first got his wit back in high school like it was me dave and our other best friend leonzo uh -huh. who, who is a hip-hop artist he's a event planner a community builder in his own right but back in high school in 11th grade it was all about us being able to drive around in the whip find a parking lot where we're freestyling you know we're just creating you know plans for short films like whatever it was for us to just be able to really use that space of that car at that time mm -hmm. um to be able to just express ourselves right absolutely and as we got older we were like yo like there's something about the feeling that we have when we are together when we're creating and expressing ourselves that we want to stay close to and we knew if we wanted to stay close to that we would have to eventually figure out the business side so as we're getting older and we start you know navigating the music industry in philly on behalf of our homie leonzo we were getting so intimately familiar with all the challenges of what it looks like to be a creative mm -hmm. right trying to figure out how do i make money to be able to just pay a hundred dollars an hour to get into the studios around yeah. the city right yeah knowing that half the records we were making were never going to come out <laughs> right i don't know how many music videos we shot that never <laughs> saw the <laughs> light of day right <laughs> and we knew that wasn't sustainable mm -hmm. and then the other thing was like as we're throwing all these events and all these shows there were so many amazing artists 
that would get on the stage and blow everybody in the venue away. But then they would get off the stage and they wouldn't collect emails. They weren't selling merchandise. And it was very clear. It's like, yo, there's a disconnect here Mm -hmm. between the talent and their understanding of themselves as an actual business. Yeah. And we were like, hold on. We think we could be way more valuable to folks than just putting them on stage and, mm-hmm. and taking their photos, right? And that's kind of what started the seeds of like, yo, there's amazing talent here in Philadelphia, but what gets in the way and leads people to think that they have to go to New York or LA to be successful? And again, this is back in 2012, 2013, mm-hmm. 2014, yeah. where there's whispers about the independent journey, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. folks weren't really talking about what it looks like to do it. And... Um, you know, it, it was just like, yo, let's figure out how we can first do it for ourselves. We put our space um, in North Philly first as a personal hub. Okay. Of like, let's throw the backdrop, mm-hmm. right, on the wall so I could do my videography, my photography. Let's build Leonzo a studio, you know. We got a couch here. That's going to be the co-working space where we'll just have the combos of what mm-hmm. entrepreneurship looks like. Um, and then the epiphany came and was like, yo, it's all about this space first and foremost for the community to build. Um, and for me, that was inspired by understanding like where resource sharing was going. Companies like Airbnb and companies like Uber, it was about connecting people to what they needed when they needed it, mm-hmm. right? As opposed to like, oh, you gotta own everything. And that really kind of informed that idea of like, what would it look like for us to do resource sharing within the creative community and the entertainment community? Okay. Um, that's, uh, I, th- I think that networking is very, very important Uh, i'm a big networking kind of guy i love uh to go to networking events and you know talk just talk business talk emails talk uh what you do get your business card uh trade uh just information about whatever it is that you're into we're talking about or you're interested in um because networking is i believe the best way to get to where you want to go um in life so whether it's you are artists or whether you are in business you always need somebody to help you get to where you want to go um it's kind of uh just transitioning to a, a little bit did you guys have any uh fears or f- any thoughts about what could happen if you guys didn't for example get to this space like you guys are in north philly uh how let, just talk to us about how you guys got to uh or be, any thoughts that weren't um, positive, I'll say. Plenty of thoughts that weren't positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, it's you, to to be an entrepreneur is to already assume the risk of failure, mm-hmm. um, and you know, it really starts with believing in yourself, and then uh, believing in the folks around you to carry out the mission and the vision. Um, I've always been extremely confident in my abilities mm-hmm. and in Will's abilities. Um, and then as we brought more of a team around, the, their abilities to kind of follow um, our lead. And um, you know that you're going to fail in like these micro scenarios, um, but failing and quitting or two, I was always, the biggest fear is probably quitting, mm-hmm. which is like, it's gotten so bad and I can't carry on. I don't believe in this anymore, um, which I've never thought about. <laughs> and the thought of quitting has never been come across my mind and if that's not coming across your mind then you don't need to be fear uh you don't have to be scared of failure Mm -hmm. uh, because you know that you were just going to progress and you will take those failures as lessons Mm -hmm. and that's really the if you want to be a successful entrepreneur in any artist business cook whatever it is you have to understand that your failures are just lessons and that if you believe in yourself and what you're doing it's just a matter of time and it's a matter of progress and i've always felt that way um, so tons of daily uh, for a decade uh, of thinking about negative things that, oh, this can go wrong and that can go wrong. Yes, because it probably will go wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a matter of put yourself around the people that when it goes wrong, they can lift you back up and people who are willing to learn from those failures and, and, uh, and get you to where you need to be. And Dave said something like really, really important that I just want to like double down on. Mm-hmm. Like, and for me, a lot of the journey, you know, like Dave mentioned, like I didn't, I didn't have any doubt, right, in, in one, my ability or his ability and our ability to be able to get this thing where it needed to go. And I also didn't ever doubt that our solution was really, really important for the problem, mm-hmm. right? However, on this journey, I had to and still always have to check myself and my relationship to failure. Okay. Because I think the one difference between winners and, and people who are not winners 
is how they deal with failure. Absolutely. Because I think sometimes people like they see failure or like something doesn't go according to plan, it doesn't work out perfectly, and then they chalk it up like, man, maybe I was never supposed to do this in the first place. If you have that mentality, you already lost. Because winners have the mentality of like, yo, even if I fail, that's a win. Because now on the other side of that failure, I'm wiser now. I know where not to go. I'm stronger because of it. And the reality is there's no one who's done anything amazing that hasn't failed. For real, for real, like, they probably failed more than most. Mm -hmm. But then they wake up the next morning with just as much enthusiasm as the day before. And as soon as you kind of, like, build that mindset where it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this regardless of the outcome because I know... I'm one step closer to actually winning. I think everything just changes around you. Yeah, definitely. That I, that part is key. Checking your relationship with failure, and not only if you're an entrepreneur, but I think that in life in general, that a lot of people should do that uh, because that might be the difference between them not doing it and doing it and being successful at it. Uh, I know I've done that uh, personally myself. Uh, checking out because I, I just thought I was going to fail and just never even said, oh, well, I'm just not even going to do it no more. Mm -hmm. So um, that I, I like that, actually. I took some notes on that myself. Um, so you guys uh, recently, or there was an article published about you guys being on the Forbes list 30 under 30. Uh, I happen to know somebody on that list as well. So I think that it's cool that I know three people on that list. And I can say I know those three people. Yeah. Um, how big of an accomplishment was that for you guys to see your names on that list? It was super cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a it's a bucket list uh -huh. thing in okay. life. You know, and as as nineteen year olds when we were starting out, and every year since I was nineteen, you know, I'd look at that list like, am I on that list? Like, I didn't even uh -huh. do shit yet, and I'm like, am I on that? <laughs> am I on that list? <laughs> um, and I remember like once once we started really doing like good work, like around 24, 25, I would like really honestly pray that like one day we'd be there because what it means in terms of just like, you know, recognition is really great. Um, local recognition is great. Regional recognition is great. National recognition is great. But the Forbes list is, is international and it's and it's and it's um, recognition from the folks that are recognizing the best. Yeah. Um, so we've always wanted that. And, you know, Will and I are both 29 uh, and in less than a month, we both turned 30. And this was really our last year for it. And honestly, I kind of just forgot about it. Yeah. And um, December 1st, 2020, yeah. um, you know, just opening the email saying you've been put on, I remember FaceTime Will. <laughs> FaceTime Will in an answer. And I was like, I need you to answer right now, Will. Because I know, I know I knew before he did, because I checked my email religiously and he does not. And uh I'm just like, well, I need you to <laughs> need, need you to get back to me right away. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, like, super oh, early, yeah. Shit, really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, call him, you know, Scarlett is the first person who's on our team for seven years, calling her, crying with her about how, how major that is, my mom, my dad, and then uh, and then Will getting back to me. He's like, What's up, bro? Like super early. What's good? <laughs> I'm like, bro, like check your email right now, like while we're on the line. And, uh, you know, it's just the stamp. Not that we need a stamp, not that we honestly need the recognition. And it's just honestly, obviously it's nice. Um, and it, it leverages us for future opportunities, not only for us, but for the entire community. Absolutely. You know, that it unlocks the, okay, this is like a real thing for these creators in this city. Uh, we can p pay closer attention to this. Bigger eyes, bigger resources will now look and invest into this community because it's ran by folks that are on this list that is a stamp of recognition and approval. Um, it's just a win all around. And um, it makes you really humbled uh, and grateful for the team that has helped you get to that point. Good job. You want to share some of your excitement? Yeah. or Yeah, I mean, I think Dave said it well. Uh -huh. you know? um, <laughs> but look, I think for me, it was... Um, Again, just dope to be honored as one of the best in the world to do what you do, mm -hmm. right? When you dedicate your life to something and you take such a big risk, right? Like both Dave and I had full-time jobs before we decided to say, yo, we must go all in on this, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when there are those moments and those negative thoughts pop up and you realize like, yo, I've committed my life to do something that like, I don't know what's next and how it's going to actually play out. Um, that accomplishment was like, Oh yeah, all of the late ass <laughs> nights, all of like the super early mornings, the this and that, the sacrifices. It just it just reminds you that much more of just like, yeah, you're on the right path, and um, that just feels good. And also like, 
even for our families, like for my mm-hmm. for Dave's yeah. mom, for my Juma, you know, <laughs> to be able to wear that, right? Yeah. It, it, that's what's really most meaningful to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she could, you know, talk to her friends. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super yeah. flex. That's big. Yeah, that's Moms yeah, was yeah, super flexing. Yeah. Brag, brag about you. That's yeah. big. Yeah. 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 My dad never really understood what the hell was going on over here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, even like the biggest accomplishments, even at the Grand Dunk, he's like, I still don't even know like what, <laughs> what this, how, I don't know how you all make money or right. whatever. But I'm like, I made the Forbes list. He's like, okay. <laughs> Okay, you're really doing something. I'm like, <laughs> ah, that, that's kind of a joke. Shout out to my dad. Always, always believed in the vision. <laughs> um, definitely, man. Congratulations, guys. I do believe in giving the people their flowers while they're still here. Um, definitely. Uh, so I know we got you guys just hit uh, recently hit a thousand members. Uh, we had or you had um, membership appreciation week yeah. two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. Um, and it was amazing, by the way. It was so much fun. Um, so what came about that idea of, you know, I know you guys talked about honoring your members and yeah. giving back and talking to, uh, wanting to create with each other. But uh, what just some of the things that came about that week? Man. Uh, so, yeah, I guess one the purpose of, of Member Appreciation Week was one to, to, to celebrate, right, that we did hit that milestone because at the end of the day like all of the the vision and all the cool things that are happening is one thing but without our members right like what are we doing right mm-hmm. so we wanted to just take a moment and say and especially right because we're in a time of covid and everything happening where i felt like the one piece of our our whole company and our whole mission that unfortunately had to take a pause for a while was just the pure joy of when you put a bunch of creators in a room together and really just be able to bask in that so we wanted to take a moment and say, yo, let's really just go in and just show love, you know, to our amazing members and, and our community. So that whole week was just programmed with really cool events, you know, Live at Rec, we did that week, um, which was kind of a, a live performance here with the spotlight, some of our, our best performers in the community. Um, Dave got pied in the face by oh, some members, man. you know. Got pied, I mean? absolutely. Um, <laughs> you pied him? Oh man, came in hot. That's good job. That's good. Um, you know, we launched our, our uh, Leave Your Mark Wall in the mm-hmm. space, which was something that I was really excited about. Again, just like creating a, a moment in our space physically where members could just tag it up, you know, and just leave your stamp um, and leave your mark on the space in, in, the, in the way that we hope that the space has left an impact on you. you know Absolutely. What I mean? Um, so there's a lot of that, you know, happy hours uh, around the city for members to just come and just get to connect and do that whole thing. Um, so that's just kind of like a couple of moments of it that I remember, but that ain't going to be something that only happens at like the big number milestone. Mm-hmm. Like that's something we want to be able to do pretty consistently because again, that joy, right? And just having community be able to, to share space together. That's really what it's all about. Uh, absolutely. Um, to comment on that as well, uh, the activity, the room to room activity was, that was hey. amazing. That's just, uh, glad you yeah, that. it was so cool, man. To, just to get other people's vibes and creativity and uh, and then just on the spot just like that you got to think of a concept and a and what you want to do to to present to your peers uh that was it was so much fun that was amazing i'm glad you enjoyed that yeah um so you did touch on it a little bit so what's what's next for the thousand plus like is there is there anything coming up or anything next in the coming year or uh, months to come yeah so i mean obviously we want to continue to grow and strengthen our community here mm-hmm. in philadelphia you know so a thousand i think we're almost at about 1100 active members now i want to see that get to 1500 and 2000 right and, and continue to just wave that flag for for creators to know that they're always going to have a dedicated place here in, in, in the city to do what they do um and then beyond that you know again we've always realized that the problem that we're solving is not just a philly problem mm-hmm. right there's creators in cities all across the, the country and all across the world who could use the the ecosystem that we're building, right? And access to the resources and the strategies and the rest of the community. Um, so we, we, we are working hard to expand that. Mm-hmm. So Dave and I have been doing a lot of traveling. And, you know, we're, we're back fundraising again mm-hmm. um, to be able to, to launch a rec model in a couple other cities. Nice, oh man. Whew, can't wait for that. <coughs> they all gotta come to Grand Open in other cities, you know what uh, I'm saying, pop you, in. I'm, I'm ready know? for it. Just let me know when and where. Got right. Got um, so kind of to uh, talk a little bit more about the future uh, or what advice would you have um, for the <coughs> youth or, or 
new entrepreneurs that are aspiring to uh, be one day on the Forbes list or just be a staple in wherever they are um, to kind of just just share kind of your experience or be able to give back to someone they did that that tried to give back to them. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things come to mind. Some of it uh, I already said, which is the idea that, you know, you have to have a certain mindset as an entrepreneur going into battle that you're not going to win every battle. It's more of the war you have to be thinking about. Um, a couple tactical things that I will always mention as advice um, is first and foremost, the the ability to not take things personally. Um, there's a lot of things that you won't you don't have yourself that you, other people will have and you'll be consistently asking for a lot of things. Um, you know, for me, I'm just behind the computer doing emails all day, every day. And anything we've received majorly, whether it's a sponsorship, whether it's an investment and an endorsement, um, has never been answered the first time I it was asked. And a lot of folks are really scared to follow up with folks. Um, and the persistence is honestly the key uh, to get to where you need to go. It's, it's, it's on the other side of success is the follow-up and, and the persistence. And a lot of people take it personally when folks do not respond to them. Uh, realizing the person you're reaching out to is probably a pretty busy person. It's why you're reaching out to them because they have accomplished things and now they're on in, in whatever they're doing for success. So it's important that as an entrepreneur that you do not take those, um, you know, the, the lack of back and forth personally and that you just continuously professionally follow up. That's like a very key tactical uh, strategy that will get you to where you wanna be if you do it professionally. Um, I will say as well, it's just extremely important to be always giving. Um, giving uh, until um, really forevermore. Like I think a lot of people, artists, there's a lot of like, um, whether it's ego, whether they believe that they're, they, they're deserving of things, um, are looking for handouts and to be given things, but while you actually should be giving, um, because that is where opportunities are really created. That is where your brand in other people's minds, uh, where, where it grows and blossoms when like, oh, this person is always helping, always supporting, always asking and never trying it to get yeah it's it's building yeah. relationships and you and you build them uh authentically by you just giving and you being of service um and i would really highly recommend that for any entrepreneur to that be the first and foremost definitely when you're in the beginning i mean always but specifically where you're in the very beginning <laughs> when you don't have any leverage just give and support and serve um absolutely James. definitely yeah um <laughs> So the one thing I would just I would just um, offer up is, especially for a young creator or a young entrepreneur who's like getting started, I gotta just double down on the mindset piece. You have to have to have to believe that you can. Like if you don't truly like in your whole being believe that you can do what it is you're setting out to do, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Um, and that's really hard, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of things at play that, that make it easy for us to have self doubt, self worth issues, and things like that. But I would just encourage you to to really like lean into whatever work you you got to do to make sure you get to the space where you really believe that you're the best person in the world to do what you're trying to do, because the journey ain't ever gonna be easy. You know what I'm saying? But the goal is that you'll just continually get better. So being able to believe that you can, and then always be like a perpetual learner, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like they say um, that, uh, what do they call it? Imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. right? That idea of like being in spaces and you don't believe you don't deserve to yeah. be there, right? And things like that. The cool thing about entrepreneurs who are successful is they don't have this big of a fear of the unknown. So it's like, yo, I don't know what it looks like to run three spaces around the country, right? When we're not even there. I don't know what it's like. I didn't know what it was like to have 25 people on our staff before we had 25 people on our mm -hmm. staff. But I do have the confidence that once I'm in that arena, I'm willing to do the work to learn to then be able to show up and do it well. And that mindset of always being willing to learn and grow, I think is, is what's carried me this far. Um, and, and I just wanna share that with whoever's there. Whoever's Absolutely. Um, I definitely think that's key uh, and appreciate these gems that you guys have uh, bestowed on us. Um, it was, uh, one want to thank you guys for coming and doing this episode with us. Um, and if you could let our viewers know where they could find you at on social media platform, on the social media platforms. Yeah, cool. So um, follow us, you know, if you want to stay in touch with the Rec journey, it's at Rec Philly, R-E-C Philly, 
uh, on Instagram, um, RAC Philly underscore on Twitter, because he was hating on us for a little bit. <laughs> um, and then the website is just www.recphilly.com. If you're in this area, would love for you guys to, you know, take a free tour of the space, you know, see what we're all about. Um, and then, you know, consider joining for yourself. And then if you want to, you know, stay in tune with my personal journey at the Will Toms on Instagram and Twitter, that's T-H-E, Will, last name is Toms, T-O-M-S. And uh, yeah, I, I say cool stuff on Twitter. So <laughs> follow me there and, and Instagram as well. Cool. Yeah. All things at Rec Philly um, and the Rec Philly underscore. Uh, personally, not as exciting on my social platforms, but if, <laughs> if you care to see what's going on at Dave Silver with an underscore. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I do want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, if you have any comments about the gems that were dropped today in the uh, in the section, please feel free. And always remember, there's no risk without growth. Thanks. Nice.